Hi, my name is Benoit Alary, and I'm a researcher with the Acoustics Lab of Aalto University, located in Finland. And today, I will present a method for capturing and reproducing directional reverberation in six degrees of freedom. In a nutshell, in our proposed method, we first capture a data set of spatial impulse response in a concert hall. From each spatial impulse response, we can extract key uh, properties of the directional reverberation. Um, using the analyze data set, we can then form new data points uh, using interpolation. Um, and then using these properties, we can then specify the parameters in an artificial reverberator. The main benefits of our proposed method is that there's no need to interpolate um, actual audio signals, only gains are modulated in the artificial reverb. Uh, it requires low storage and it's efficient for real-time applications. But first, um, let's go back a little bit and cover some important background theory. What is uh, directional reverberation? So here we refer to a sound field which contains direction-dependent characteristics. So this means um, that different directions will have different uh, decay times, for example. Um, so this is an anisotropic sound field, meaning uh, that it is not a diffuse field. To characterize the directional reverberation, we rely on a pre-existing method for analysis of mono impulse response, namely the energy decay curve. This consists of calculating uh, for any given moment in time in the impulse response the total amount of energy remaining in the decay. So in the case of a spatial impulse response, we want to perform the EDC analysis on a set of angle-dependent uh, directional impulse response, which can be extracted from the ambisonic signals. Um, then we want to calculate the mean EDC curves at all direction, and this allows us to calculate um, the deviation of each angle to this mean. To illustrate the, this EDD method, we can uh, see from this uh, pre-recorded impulse response um, how it behaves over time. So the red color represents um, angles with more energy in the decay, and the blue less. Now let's discuss how we can reproduce these direction-dependent characteristics using an artificial reverberator. So if we start from a classic artificial reverberator, the FDN, we have a system um, composed of a network of delay lines of various length that are controlled by a series of gain at the input, gains and the output, and in the recirculating path we have uh, a set of G filters uh, that are absorbent, frequency dependent absorbent filters controlling the decay in the system. And this A matrix is where we control how much energy um, for each delay lines gets fed into the input of all the delay lines. Um, so we can use a normal uh, FDN to output to different channels, but they will all share the same decay characteristics. So another approach is to um, consider a sound field that we would sample from different directions. Here we have 12 points distributed and each unique direction will have their own reverberator and decay characteristics. And together they can be combined um, into a larger structure called the Directional Feedback Delay Network, the DFDN. Um, so it's quite similar. The main difference is that the signal flow lines are now thick uh, to represent multi-channel delay lines and um, there's K channels, one for each directions that we want um, to reproduce. And in the DFDN, the main important parameter to consider are the filters, absorption filters, located at the end of each delay line. Um, and the way we parameterize them is using a set of um, direction and frequency dependent T60 characteristics. So these T60s are converted into gains that are then um, raised to the power of each delay line. And this will give us um, a specific attenuation gain that we want to achieve um, after a specific time uh, duration related to that delay line. And using these gains, we can construct 
uh, absorbing filter, so in the form of um, multiband EQ in this case, that combined together will follow the prescribed T60s. Now let's go over the propose method. First, we need to capture a data set. Um, for this, we visited the Finnish National Opera and Ballet in Helsinki. Um, so they have um, their main auditorium that was built in 1993, so fairly modern uh, opera hall. Um, and we went there with uh, Nagan Might and we, record, we captured a set of 15 microphone position for a single sound source location in this experiment. So the source was located in the center of the main stage and we distributed on a non-uniform grid the microphone positions. So to analyze the captured data set, as we entered previously, we use uh, the EDC method. And this allows us, uh, in this case, to extract a value for uh, the EDC0 for each direction. And the EDC0 is essentially the EDC value at time zero which gives us this total amount of energy in the impulse response. And we can also extract T60 values by looking at the slope of each uh, EDC curves. And we perform this for a set of directions. So now let's look at some results. Here we have a very compact representation of a location dependent and direction dependent EDC zero. Um, each spheres that we're observing from the top hemispheres corresponds to each of the 15 data points in this layout. So we're looking uh, from the same perspective and here, uh, meaning that the sound source is um, towards the top. The color uh, of each spheres uh, indicates how much deviation to a mean in white. So red represents um, a stronger EDC zeros and blue a weaker uh, amount of energy in the EDC zero. The, the mean and deviation of each uh, spheres is indicated for each. Um, now here we, we can observe the estimated T60 for a frequency band of uh, between 200 and 800 Hertz. We can see that in that band, um, the, there's some slightly longer decay times uh, towards the back of the room in most of the locations. And if we look at um, higher frequency bands, we see, for instance, that at higher frequency, um, it seems that the uh, most of the decay energy comes from the ceiling, which yields longer, slightly longer um, reverberation time in those directions. Okay, so now that we have um, these analyzed uh, values, how can we use them to inform uh, artificial reverb? So now if we go back to the flow diagram for the DFDN that we showed earlier, um, we see that we can use the um, measured uh, EDC zero values that are direction dependent, as well as a direction and frequency dependent estimated T60 values to inform both the input gain and the multiband EQ located at the exit of each delay group. And these uh, values, these gains, uh, can be modulated in real time to accommodate the scenarios of six degrees of freedom. So now let's look at an example result that we can obtain using the DFDN. So we have on the left a captured spatial impulse response and on the right a synthesized one using the DFDN. Here we're looking only at the horizontal plane and the radius in these polar figures represents the time in the impulse response. And the color uh, represents the directions where the energy deviates more to the mean represented in white. So red is more energy, blue is less energy. So we can compare how the synthesized one uh, measures um, against the original one. And we see that the beginning is pretty different. And one explanation is that the DFDN in its in this configuration that we're showing, uh, it does not reproduce the early reflection. It's recommended to use retracing, for example, with that. And um, we have kind of the broad features that this 90 degrees angle has more energy, but it's not perfect because uh, we can only reproduce 
as many direction as we parameterize in the DFDN and also uh, we're limited by the chosen frequency band. So depending how many bands we choose and how many direction, uh, it's going to smooth the output and it's not going to be exactly the same. And now uh, if we want to uh, interpolate between the set of data points, we can use um, a technique called the inverse distance weighting. And the main benefit of this is that this doesn't require kind of uh, align points on a grid. And we're simply collecting all the distances uh, from a virtual point to the surrounding points to calculate a weighted distance for each. And th this in terms uh, is applied to uh, their various properties, like in this case, uh, direction dependent T60. So, uh, for example, if we want to reproduce this virtual point between point 1, 3, 6, and 7, represented here, we interpolate each angle between the surrounding points and we can uh, reach this um, representation here. In conclusion, using our proposed reproduction framework, we can capture and analyze directional reverberation characteristics from a set of spatial impulse responses. Um, we can interpolate between data points to modulate a set of gains in a Dillian network for real-time six degrees of freedom sound reproduction. Future work includes capturing more data points uh, in more concert halls and evaluating different interpolation methods as well as evaluating our capacity to perceive these characteristics. Here are some references and thank you for listening and I'm available for questions.